We live in a mysterious world that has countless unexplained objects and mysteries from the past. Over the years, archaeologists have discovered many objects belonging to the past civilizations that have absolutely no explanation. While most of these items look quite ordinary, there are many legends about them that tell of their mysterious powers and curses. Some of these mysterious objects are currently present in various museums and private collections around the world while others seem to have been lost in time and only their legends remain with us. There are many objects present around the world that are alleged to be haunted and anyone who possesses them suffers from their curse. Most of the ordinary people and even many of the professional researchers prefer staying at a safe distance from these objects due to their horrific past. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we'll be taking a look at five mysterious objects. Annabelle's Doll One of the most evil haunted objects shown in mainstream Hollywood movies is based on a real-life doll. The allegedly haunted doll known as Annabelle's Doll has featured in The Conjuring, a 2013 horror flick. Many other movies have featured dolls based on this allegedly haunted doll. Unlike the dolls shown in the movies, the appearance of the original Annabelle's Doll is quite unimpressive. This doll was reportedly purchased by a woman from an antique shop in 1970. She bought this doll as a unique present for her daughter named Donna. The stories about the doll tell that it was a life-sized rag doll that was a couple of feet in height. The woman wanted to give this doll as a gift to her daughter as her graduation from nursing school was near. Despite not being a huge fan of dolls, Donna loved this unique present and kept it in her apartment. Donna shared the apartment with another student named Angie. After receiving the doll, Donna left it in her apartment and did not pay much attention to it. However, after a few days, she noticed that each time she would put the doll at one place, it changed its position and moved to another. At first, Donna ignored the movement, thinking that maybe her roommate Angie had changed the position of the doll. However, as the days passed, the doll's mysterious movements started to bother both Donna and Angie. Sometimes they would leave the doll in the bedroom, and upon their return from school, they would find the doll sitting on a couch in the living room with her arms and legs crossed. They even started getting written notes placed beside the doll, written in the handwriting of a small child. The notes would read phrases like help us or help Lou. Frightened by the strange behavior of the doll, Donna and her roommate contacted a woman who was famous for dealing with exorcisms and contacting the spirits. They performed a ritual to get in contact with the entity that possessed the doll and found that it was the spirit of a young girl named Annabelle Higgins. The spirit told Donna and her roommate that she felt safe living with them and all she wanted was love and protection. Donna and her roommate ignored the warnings from their friends and thought of it as a harmless little adventure. They assured the spirit possessing the doll that they would keep it safe and kept the doll in their apartment. However, it turned out that the spirit had lied to the girls. It started attacking Donna's friends who would visit the apartment and after a couple of bloody incidents, Donna and Angie contacted a priest. With the help of a couple of paranormal investigators, the priest found that the doll was not possessed and it was just being moved and used by an evil spirit who actually wanted to inhabit a human host. The ultimate goal of the spirit was to kill or possess the occupants of the apartment. The priest and the paranormal investigators performed a recitation in order to cleanse it and scare away the evil spirit. They took the doll with them and built a special case for it. Since that day, the doll is locked in that case and is believed to be kept in Ed and Lorraine Warren's real-life occult museum. Screaming Skull of Burton Agnes Hall Burton Agnes Hall is a large mansion located in Yorkshire. It was built by Sir Henry Griffith during the 17th century. The most famous artifact of Burton Agnes Hall is a mysterious skull. It is believed that this is the skull of Anne Griffith, one of the daughters of Sir Henry Griffith. According to the legend, Sir Henry Griffith had three daughters. Anne was one of them. One day she was returning from a friend's house when she was attacked by ruffians. They left her severely wounded. Anne was brought to Burton Agnes where she passed away after suffering from delirious fevers. Before her death, she told her sisters that her soul 
would not be able to rest in peace unless some part of her body remained in the beautiful mansion they lived in. However, when Anne passed away, her family did not respect her last wish and she was buried in the local churchyard. Things took a strange turn when Anne's family started hearing sounds of Anne screaming and crying in different parts of the mansion. After a few days of hearing mysterious sounds and experiencing various supernatural phenomenon, Anne's family decided that it would be best to honour her last wish, so they excavated her grave, removed her skull and placed it in the house. It is believed that since that day the spirit of Anne has not bothered anyone. The mysterious screaming skull still rests in Burton Agnes Hall. Cursed Maori Warrior Masks The Maori tribe is a native tribe consisting of Polynesian people in New Zealand. The Maori warriors belonging to this tribe are famous for their warfare skills. They are considered to be extremely brave warriors and sometimes even believed to have some supernatural abilities obtained as a result of extreme rituals. Before going to a battle, each Maori warrior used to carve a statue or mask. Maori people believed that if a warrior who had built his statue or mask died in a battle, his spirit would return to that statue or mask. Many Maori warrior masks are kept at a national museum in New Zealand. These masks were provided by the Maori tribe. They believe that most of these masks have spirits of the ancient warriors trapped inside them. In 2010, the Maori masks made it to the headlines around the world when the museum issued a statement in which it warned pregnant women to stay away from these masks as it could invoke a curse. According to Maori tradition, the pregnant or menstruating women are considered to be taboo. They believe that the masks and other ancient artifacts are also taboo, and if the two of them come in contact with each other, a curse could be invoked. Women from Lem Statue Also known as the Goddess of Death, Women from Lem is a historic artifact carved from pure limestone. It was discovered in 1878 during an excavation in Lem, Cyprus. Archaeologists believe that it was made around 3500 BCE. The exact purpose of this mysterious statue is unknown. Since its discovery, this statue has been in possession of four different families, and each family has had a tragic ending. Lord Elfont was the first owner of the Wound from Lem statue. He, along with his six other family members, died within six years of acquiring the statue. The second owner was Ivor Minusi. He had a similar fate, and he, along with his family, died within four years of acquiring the mysterious artifact. The same thing happened to the third owner, Thompson Knoll and his family. Then the statue disappeared for a while, and no one knows who had it in their possession. However, it reappeared and came into the possession of Sir Alan Biverbrook, who did not know about the fate of the previous owners. Sir Alan Biverbrook, his wife, and two daughters died a few months after getting the statue. Realising that there was some kind of curse attached to the statue, the two surviving sons of Sir Alan Biverbrook donated the artefact to the Royal Scottish Museum in Edinburgh, Scotland. The curse of the statue even affected the museum curator, who died within one year. Since then, the statue has been kept at the museum, and those who know about it stay away from it while visiting the museum. Pesh Island Pesh Island is a small island that lies just offshore in the Detroit River in the US. This island is located in the middle of an urban metropolis and seems to be of high commercial value. Yet it is completely abandoned and all the development plans related to Pesh Island seem to have failed. It is believed that there is a curse on this island. The island was once a home to a French-Canadian family named La Forêt de Tenon. This family lived in the island for 34 years, from 1800 to 1834. However, due to various reasons, the family abandoned the island and shifted to another place. Later, the descendants of the family sold the island to another party. In the late 1800s, the island was bought by a man named Hiram Walker. He tried to develop the island as a permanent holiday resort for his family. He built a huge mansion that had 40 rooms. He dug lakes across the island and planted hundreds of trees. He also developed a golf course and stables for horses. However, 
Hiram Walker died soon after the completion of the resort. The property was transferred to his daughter, who also died a few years later. The property had various owners during the subsequent years, but no one could enjoy living on the island for a long period. Later, in the 1950s, it was purchased by a private company who tried to convert it into a public holiday resort, but its plan failed as well. Since then, there have been many efforts to develop Pesh Island, but it seems that some mysterious curse is not allowing the development of the island and it sits in the middle of Detroit as a modern urban mystery. But what do you think of these five mysterious objects? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comments section below and help us by growing this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more amazing videos.